Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it is Saturday the 16th of May. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget you can get notified about the updates of this video. Just send an email to generalweather and hyphen subscribe at weatherweb.net and we'll send you the updates through. Or you can subscribe on YouTube by just clicking on the subscribe button here. Now, uh, as well as the that, we've got a new premium video for you uh, that was released yesterday. And we also have a new weatherweb.net premium video for you. Um, these are for those of you who want more information. Um, we issue these forecasts at the same time that we're sending out forecasts to private clients. So those of you who aren't signed up for our regular services, uh, you can buy the videos on demand, our more detailed videos and our more detailed forecast on demand. So June's weather guidance has been updated and you can click on the screen now and it will take you directly to that video. It costs Nine ninety nine, and it's available through YouTube. So um, I, I always stress the point: weatherweb.net is free of charge. But of course, we have a business to run. We exist to make money. It's the adverts that basically make the money for weatherweb.net. But we offer these premium videos because uh, some of you were saying that you wanted to see these sort of depth, in-depth forecasts at the same time that our private clients were seeing them. So that's the reason that we make them available. So please don't run off thinking that uh, suddenly we're going to start charging for uh, everything that you see here on the site uh, but it is there if you want to use it so you can click on now and get a full detailed forecast for the whole of June our latest thoughts and the reasoning behind our thoughts as well okay on with the forecast for today and what I thought we'd do today is just a bit of a review really take a look at some of the indexes that we haven't looked at for some time uh, and just see how the atmosphere is shaping up at the moment this is the 7 to 10 day mean of the 500 millibar flow and it's valid um, from today up to a week on Tuesday uh, so it's valid up to the 26th of May we got the ECMWF here on the left we got the GFS on the right and you notice a bit of difference actually between the two ECMWF is quite Keen on building this quite large ridge here towards the west of the British Isles. Um, GFS has it in there as well, look, but as a much sharp and featured GFS wants to make more of the trough in the North Sea. So out of the two, actually, the ECMWF is the more settled of the models, bringing in high pressure, and there'll be much talk of high pressure, I think, over the next few days because it's back on the scene. Um, the GFS far more reluctant to bring it in. It wants to keep us in this cold northerly during uh, the back end of this week. And and into next week so it wants to keep this northerly wind blowing down through the country rotating around the low pressure area like so and blowing through showers keeping us far more unsettled into next weekend but as we've seen the ECMWF wants to keep things much more unsettled so it's going to be interesting actually to see how that one develops I've got the CFS coming up in just a second for the next four weeks but I wanted to show you this sort of stuff first of all. This is the total solar irradiance for the period from the 14th of February through to the 8th of February. It's just interesting to look at what the sun's doing. So this is um, basically its output from the sun. And you notice, look, it, it goes in cycles, which is what you expect to see. But you notice here, look, this downward trend. See that downward trend in the cycle from February through March through April and to now and in fact we're getting to or have recently just reached the lowest point of the solar irradiance now just look at how that's obviously only just from the period from February so it's the last three months if we add in um, the data back to uh, 2004 so when the satellite first was in orbit the uh, the source satellite that is you notice here look how there is a, a, a general fall off in irradiance going through to uh, 2009 and then we saw this increase take place here but it's peaked and it's starting to come up again now these are part of the normal uh, everyday fluxes of the sun but it's interesting to see how we saw that dip we've seen the maximum come in and now we're going down into a minimum period once again and sunspot numbers as well we're in cycle 24 just now so here's cycle 24 look here was cycle 23 uh, which peaked 2001 2002 but you notice here look now how in cycle 24 we've actually seen another little peak take place but now it's started to fall off so we're coming back into this part of the prediction that's the dotted line is the prediction for 24 for cycle 24 and notice how quiet it is look 175 on the scale there so it's a very very quiet period on the sun 
in terms of the cycle. And if we just look at layman's count comparison, which is comparing this cycle with previous cycles, and this cycle is 24, which is the blue line that you see here. But look how closely it kind of resembles the pink line you see going through here, which is actually um, Sunspot cycle 5, and that was 1790 back to that period of 1798 when we last saw um, such a cycle in place. These are the daily solar winds outputs. Um, this is from the SOHO satellite and it goes back to uh, June last year here, look, 2nd of June last year. And we have a speed here, so this is the daily solar wind speed, and then these are the density. So this is the density of the particles that are originating from the sun in the solar wind. And you notice here, look, this is what I find quite interesting, look, something that's developed is this fall off here in the minimum daily densities. So there's the minimums are actually decreasing. The maximums have stayed fairly similar, but the minimums look have decreased. Now, previous uh, to the previous event that this occurred in, so we saw these minimums taking place, look, there was a fall off in the maximum density as well, but this is a big gap that we're seeing here between these two features. So that's something interesting to be watching as well. CO2, again, we haven't looked at CO2 for some time. It's on the increase still. This is um, the CO2 concentrations at Mauna Loa, which has got the longest unbroken record of CO2 observations. And you notice here, in fact, it was my namesake who started doing this keeling. Um, but um, you notice here, look, this rise, the black line here, showing the mean, the annual means going up here, look. And you notice this rise in parts per million, 400 being the critical figure and globally well look there's the rise and it broke through the 400 barrier of course uh, last month so 400 parts per million on the global co2 and of course still debate surrounding the co2 but you know i look at all the and i have to say no probably co2 temperature the link I think it's there. You have to look at the science and say, OK, what's it pointing to? And it does point to that link of CO2 being um, directly linked to an increase in temperature. Yes, we've got this problem that we've got an 18, 19 year period now where global temperatures have remained steady. That means the heat is going somewhere. And the theory, of course, at the moment is that the oceans are uh, acting as a heat sink. Now, that may be correct. It may be incorrect, but it's a good hypothesis. It's a good theory. And we do this all the time. You know, you, you well, obviously we don't have data coming in from other planets in the solar system, but we have to make assumptions on what their atmosphere is doing, what their climate is doing based on what we know back here on Earth. And I think we're probably kidding ourselves a little bit if we don't think that CO2 plays a major contribution. Um, this is the mean global surface temperatures from 1996 through to um, the present day and the black here is meteorological stations the red is the land ocean temperature index and actually you can see look that there's been a you could draw a line through there saying that well actually there, there hasn't been that much of an increase but this is interesting here look you have to say from 2012 there does seem to be an upward trend taking place in here and anyway whatever happens the temperature anomalies are still up there you know we're, we're still peaking here look at some 1.2s generally through here at 0.8 so you've still got increased global and then if we look at it on a seasonal basis going back to 1950 and on this chart uh, we've got the El Nino's plotted across the bottom here and of course I'm rabbiting on about El Nino as, as well at the moment in our videos um, you can see here look this global increase in temperature that's takes place in temperature anomalies I should say that takes place here particularly uh, from sort of the mid 1970s and yes look there's our flattening out period it's in there okay so there is certainly a slowdown but it's still 0 0.6 degrees above the um, usual temperatures so we're still seeing an anomaly of plus 6 degrees whatever happens and whatever the arguments are the temperatures are still there and they're still warmer and you know I've said it myself in the past and I will say it again when we get some science come up that questions uh, climate change and human induced climate change then I'll, I'll question it again then but at the moment you've got to say folks it 
seems to be pointing in the direction that it's it's co2 um as i say if the science comes in the other way then yeah we talk about that and you know here at weatherweb i try to give both sides of the argument i try to strip out some of the hysteria from it and and, and look at the facts and at the moment those are the facts uh, okay cfs forecast we're going to go from right to left here cfs for week one uh here we are uh this is uh, up to the 22nd of may low the normal heights towards the north high the normal down towards the southwest look northwesterly flow cool northwesterly flow bringing the mixed conditions this week but high pressure back on the scene look week two 23rd to the 29th of may out towards the west but it has this low off towards the east now to me this actually looks more believable than the ECMWF so I think what this does is it brings us in a cold north and northeasterly flow it suggests that during uh, wit week so that's half term week of course suggests that we stay in that northeasterly flow still pretty cool still pretty unstable air particularly across eastern and southern areas driest of the weather out towards the west and the north and probably improving there all areas cold though and then into weeks three and week four week three showing up with the high off towards the north bringing in this northeast flow this is the 30th of may to the 5th of june so it brings in this northeast flow still cool dry conditions i think overall and certainly much drier in the south and the east suggested on this um so dry conditions coming through and then week four look from the 6th of june to the 12th has got high pressure off towards the southwest and I mentioned there about the uh, high pressure and I want to close out with this map. I'll make far more of it in the uh, premium video as we're having our discussion about June. But this is the mean anomaly at the 500 millibar heights in moderate El Nino June years. And look at that. Notice the orange and the reds centered off towards the east of the UK. High pressure. It tries to bring high pressure in, tries to make high pressure dominate high pressure on the scene in June. Is it going to be the case? We'll wait and see. CFS tries to get there, doesn't it? And uh, as I say, I make far more of this in the premium video. Uh, and it's there and available for you to watch now. Just, just click on the screen and it will take you there. But that's not to the detriment of those of you watching through weatherweb.net. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. And of course, you send that email in and uh, you can subscribe to our email list wow that's been quite a long look ahead hasn't it uh, hopefully it's been interesting for you and useful information on there but for now whatever you're doing thanks again for watching keep the sun shining have a great day and bye for now